I've taken issue with the methodology employed to um, determine whether or not someone is intelligent and, and or to measure someone else's intelligence. I said and I still say that we can observe someone's actions and we can take note of their attempts to communicate either with ourselves or with others. And we can make certain inferences from all of that. But make no mistake, that's all that we're doing, is we're making inferences. We don't know what's going on inside someone else's head. We do not know the complex series of cognitions that resulted in them doing what they're doing right now. It, we, we don't know what led them to the point where they were sitting there, in this case, doing an IQ test, and caused them to answer or perform on the IQ test the way that they did. We can infer certain things from that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that. But what I'm saying is we should be aware of the fact that all that we're doing is inferring. At the end of the day, we have discovered a tool which has certain uses. We haven't actually determined anything. Now, that, that's a very important distinction to make because some people have said that I'm attempting to, I guess, argue the universe out of existence to say that we don't know anything, that we can't do anything. Now, I'm not saying that at all. Um, I live in this world just the same as, any, uh, as much as anyone else does. But let's just see it for what it is and see our own assumptions for what they are, our own inferences for what they are. Scientific arrogance is just as dangerous as any other kind of arrogance. Now, again, scientific arrogance is a value judgment that I have placed on other people. I, I see people saying that, look, we're not, um, a, and other people being what I suppose we can somewhat even disparagingly call race realists, I see them saying, look, all your objections to what we're saying are based on what, the way you want the world to be we are saying this is the way the world is let's keep all this philosophy stuff out of it all of this um, value judgment we're just dealing with solid hard facts here the incontrovertible stuff well okay I'm willing to go down that road but what I want to do first is determine whether or not all that stuff that they say is incontrovertible actually is incontrovertible and it's not incontrovertible any more than anything else is. It's all arguable. So that divorce that they, or that some people seem to want between science and philosophy is a mere value judgment in and of itself. Because the idea that we can't live our lives if we question absolutely everything, is a value judgment in itself. Of course we can live in this world. We already do. I often tell people, go out at night, on a cloudless night, and look up. What do you see? You don't know what that is. We call it the sky. What a wimp of a word to describe infinity. You're looking up and what you see in terms of space and time, I suppose, never ends. We haven't a clue what the sky is. We don't know. It's just something up there and we've learned to ignore it and get on with our lives. But let's not kid ourselves. We're dealing with these sorts of problems every moment of our lives. You have to somehow move on with all the things that you can't be sure of. So in a sense, I'm saying that I agree with the people who say that um, we can't uh, just throw things like IQ tests down the sink, or we can't just throw genetics down the sink because it doesn't tell us anything. What I'm saying is we better understand what we're doing when we do so, uh, because when you start picking things like that off and say, look, we, we, we can't live in this world unless we make certain assumptions, then what you're doing is ultimately you're just taking sides and you're 
propounding a philosophy. You are putting philosophy into your science, whether you like it or not. What do people think scientific axioms are? Scientific axioms are certain points that you have to rely upon. You have to take as givens, otherwise your entire science falls apart. Uh, now, that's fine. I'm willing to do that. But let's not forget that we are dealing with axioms here. And this is far more important than we might think, simply because of the potential, I should say, earth-shattering consequences of things like scientific racialism. Our entire society is built upon the axiom that we're all equal. Okay, now, I'm willing to admit that that is an axiom. It's not a fact. It, well, it may be a fact. We don't know. But it is an axiom. It's a linchpin upon which everything in our society operates. Now, if we're going to start questioning that, we'd better understand what we're doing. I quoted Apocalypse Now in the uh, uh, explanation of um, my uh, couple of videos ago, of a video I made, where I quoted um, the line where uh, Martin Sheen's character says, never get out of the boat. Absolutely goddamn right. Not unless you are going all the way. Now by getting out of the boat, in this case he was saying, never step out of the world that you've built around you based on all of your axioms and assumptions. Stay in there, because what you find when you get out of that boat might wreck your life, it might drive you insane, it might push you over the edge in many other ways, unless of course you're willing to go all the way. Unless, uh, it, never start questioning axioms unless you're going to question them all. Now again, the scientific racialists, to me at least, my understanding of what they're saying, say that we're going to attack certain philosophical axioms in our society, or we're going to at least question them and undermine them, but we have axioms, scientific axioms, or what we call scientific axioms, that must remain sacrosanct. Otherwise, our whole point of view collapses, just as we've caused Western liberalism, I suppose one could loosely describe human equality as Western liberalism, to collapse as well. If we start questioning the bedrock of everything, what you actually end up doing is arguing the universe out of existence. That can be done. You end up in a solipsistic sort of uh, philosophy whereby nothing is ever sure. Which is fine, I suppose. If people want to attempt to see the world that way, that's okay. But as far as doing anything with that philosophy, we can't. What we can do, though, is use it as a means of guarding against scientific arrogance. When science tries to divorce itself from philosophy, from morality, and especially from ethics, it had better be prepared for ethics and philosophy to challenge its axioms. Because you better believe that I'm going to do that. Thank you.